Hello and welcome back to the FIFA 23 Arsenal career mode. We are here for part 20 of this beautiful series. And let's take a real swift look at Afonso Mendes again. Right, I'm going to let him go because he's not going to be anything special, is he? Um, he is very, very underwhelming. So he's been binned off. And what we will do is actually just set up not transfer history, although it's interesting. Let's have a look at the tab real quick, actually. Um, so this is a list of all of the moves across the transfer window from every single club, so not just our own. I wonder if we can sort that with value so we can see the real big move. So Harry Kane has finally made the move away from Tottenham Hotspur in an attempt to actually win some silverware for a massive fee of £104 million. Uh, Obviously, there was links with... Um, Harry Kane's move away but that was with Manchester City I believe last year uh, again rumours of that fee hitting 100 million but in the end they opted for um, signing Jack Grealish for the, that same kind of money 100 million pounds massive massive fee not yet lived up to by Jack Grealish and I'm, I'm not convinced he ever will uh, it's a very very big fee but there's some good transfer moves here Jamal Musiala off to Liverpool definitely a, a big Improvement required at Liverpool midfield at the moment, as we're seeing this season, they're not hitting the same heights that they used to. And Teo Hernandez making the transfer to FC Barcelona for 82 million. Um, so some very big moves here. This one being the most important, I think. Rafael Leal to Arsenal Football Club. I think that would really seal the deal on the title and, and real European progress. I think as well if we were able to to make that coup. Um, but in the league here, we are up against Brighton, Hove Albion away. Uh, it's a big game. It's a tough game. Brighton are kind of Arsenal's bogey team. And they've been playing particularly well, especially under that man right there, um, who appears to have got manager of the month here. Though Brighton only seems to be on 15 points. He's obviously had a good month of it. But Graham Potter done wonders with that, that Brighton side. I think he's deserved his move to Chelsea. I think it was probably a little bit too early for him to jump and for him to jump to Chelsea Football Club is it's always a difficult one because of their historic lack of faith with management I think it's a it's a risky move for him but again I'm sure he saw the pound signs and, and jumped on that one and I don't think he'll be ruining that decision too much I think he's getting the support he and the backing he required from the board there obviously with them spending 100 million on Mudrick and another 100 million as of yesterday, on Enzo Fernandez, the Argentine midfielder, obviously playing a big role in in the midfield for the Argentine Cup win. Big money being spent, uh, but if anybody's going to get that talent ticking, I think Graham Potter's a, a very good choice. Although he hasn't hit the ground running with them, there's a lot of work to be done there, and, and those acquisitions will only help that, I'm sure. So we'll get stuck into Brighton here. Uh, obviously, they're doing quite well since Marino's Graham Potter's departure um, and that is a lot because of who they've brought in to, to replace Graham the Potter in the form of um, De Zerbi. So they kind of seem to have gone from one world-class manager to another. They've really done very well in their recruitment, not just in their managerial recruitment, but in, their, in terms of their players as well. They've got a lot of young talent. Um, well, and they're playing well with, with what they've got, really. Quickly. They're not the big spenders by any means, but they are able to sell those players on really for big money with um, players such as Trossard being... OK, we've conceded very early. Um, Trossard moving from Brighton over Albion to Arsenal Football Club, who the fee was, you know, it was quite good for Arsenal Football Club, but it's obviously a lot of money for um, Trossard and, and for, for Brighton to receive uh, with that one being around 20 million uh, and obviously with Caicedo with a lot of interest from Arsenal being valued at around 80 uh, with with bids I believe up to that being rejected by Brighton and Hove Albion from Arsenal Football Club so they know the value of their players they are going to stick with it uh, and Caicedo will remain there for another season especially with Arsenal's short term acquisition of Jorginho uh, with, with a one year deal with the option to extend that for another year should they wish to do so I think that's a very sensible signing from Arsenal we know how temperamental Partey is with his injuries um, and Lekonga 
he needs another couple of years of development because uh, he just wasn't cutting the mustard in terms of being that backup. So Virginia is a very sensible um, replacement, and obviously that leaves the door open to, to bring in Declan Rice from West Ham um, in summer. And I'm hoping and praying that that is something that does happen because he's a very, very talented youngster. And for him to be at Arsenal Football Club again, that would really take us to that next level, which is what we're looking to do now. We've we've really steadied the ship and, and got rid of almost the entirety of the Deadwood. Um, Cedric heading out on loan to Fulham as well in this transfer window. So it's almost been a complete overhaul for, for Mikel Arteta. And that's more than showing on the pitch as well. It, it's a very new look Arsenal and it's one that is full of energy. And that is what has brought the fans alive and what's brought the team alive. And a very positive buzz around Arsenal right now. But it's good to see a team like Brighton able to withstand the loss of Graham Potter. Um, it was kind of a coup from Chelsea that seemed to come out of nowhere. And Graham Potter did kind of strip the, the staff in the background as well. He, he wanted all those to come with him. So Brighton were left hanging really on, on that one. But their response to it has been phenomenal with the acquisition of De Zerbi and the style that he's continued with Brighton very similar to Graham Potter's um, and you could argue that they're, they're kind of looking better than before with, with big results coming in including a, a 3-0 win over Liverpool Football Club who are down in the dumps right now uh, and, and Brighton fully exploited that it's a very interesting style of play from Brighton they're not ones who will try and keep you pinned back they, they like to encourage you at the press they like to keep the ball with their centre-backs, force teams onto them, and then they'll pass their way out. They're very, very press-resistant. Um, and he likes watching those two centre-backs able to beat, beat that initial press and then launch the attack from there. That is what De Zerbi likes to do, and they do it very well. And it's something that they'll only get better at. So just seeing an update there, Ivan Tony scoring against Chelsea Football Club. Not sure how much longer Ivan Tony will be knocking about after his insane betting scandal. Um, I mean, it's unbelievable. Not just the fact that he's committed that offence, but the sheer number of counts. It's in, in the hundreds. Um, and as I say, it's an odd one for, for Brentford to continue with him, you know? I mean, there's instances of him betting on himself to get red carded and, and then he would get red carded in those games with, with handballs and, and stuff like that so I think for me a, a striker that is actively betting against your club should not be somebody who you stick with I know he is their best striker he is full of potential for talent but when somebody's you know when you're aware of that kind of activity going on it, it, for me, it's a no-brainer. The player's got to go, regardless of their talent. So the um, because it'll be interesting to see what action the FA take and, and what action Brentford take as well. Because at the moment, it's been very little, purely because of his ability uh, and what he brings to the team in terms of goals. So, yeah, OK, not a great start here. Brighton 1, Arsenal nil. We are going to have to turn this one around so here. Not sure the where the half. problems really lie. Um, in terms of the personnel, we've got all the big boys out here, but players like Mitoma and everyone are, are causing us problems here. So we'll see what we can produce in the second half. We didn't really create too much. It was quite a flat game from us. So this second half can, can only be better, I'm sure. Or much, much worse. But uh, I'm sure it will go very much Jesus. in our favour as we look to counter-attack well, here. To so Hazy, or sorry, it's Liao out wide there. The Bringing the width. It's kind of just lacking the options here, but Hazy through, and there we go, equalised. Pick that ball up, Sam. Let's get that back on the go. Return this one around. Good turn there. Uh, drilled into the feet of Gabriel Jesus, who rifles it into the back of the net. Taken brilliantly. So we're level. Um, in terms of the league, 
fixtures and results aren't beginning to matter too much. As I say, we're like a 12 or 11 points clear, and there it is. The turnaround completed. 2-1, a brace from Gabriel Jesus, who's already the, the least top scorer. He's extending that even further. But these games are, are kind of beginning to matter less and less as we are running away with it. And we are going to have to start turning our attention elsewhere, start turning our attention to those what we would consider smaller cups, such as the Carabao and the FA Cup in the Europa League. We'll be able to start resting big players for these league games and start focusing on those tournaments to make sure we can bring home um, the maximum number of, of pieces of silverware. It just seems like we're really quite confident on the ball and off the ball. He says, as you can see, I got to talk that one up, didn't I? <laughs> Undav, I've never, literally never heard of Undav, but he's just bagged. So he's a good header to be to. But yeah, Brighton, I'm not sure what they've done in terms of their transfer window. Um, I know obviously they've lost Trossard with Matoma kind of stepping in to be that guy's replacement, so they'll be okay there. But I'm not sure what else they've brought in. I don't think there was too much on their plate, especially not in January. I think, that they're, as I say, they're a team who don't like to spend a lot of money. Scouting there is very good, and they're, they're the kind of team who will be bringing in those players for a, a couple of million and hoping to make multi million pounds out of them. And they're kind of a bit of a almost a Southampton um, of, of the current era. There was that, that period of time where Southampton were producing endless amounts of talent for clubs like Liverpool and, and Arsenal. So it almost seems like they're the new version of that. Um, and, and their partnership with Arsenal, <laughs> incredible bicycle kick from Thomas Partey there. Bit, bit extra, probably a little bit unnecessary. Um, but yeah, the partnership they've kind of created with Arsenal, and, uh, Brighton that is, has well, been very really beneficial, especially for Both Arsenal Football Club. Well um, and hopefully that is something that we can continue with them. I know the Caicedo deals probably upset them. Or the attempted Caicedo deal, I should say, with that one obviously falling through. Um, but then they've maintained that he wasn't for sale. We we didn't push it too hard. We've, we've made a couple of bids. Um, but in the end, Bryson was just asking for more money than we were willing to pay for it. And, and at such a young age, spending that kind of money, £80 million on an unproven player, it's again too much. And we've made that mistake before. So it's one that... I'm kind of glad it didn't work out as good as Caicedo is. You know, I don't think he's worth that 18 million price tag as of just yet. And if it means that we can get the rice in as well, as I say, I'm more than happy to let that one go. So Trossard still with them on here, uh, but they're causing us some problems here. I did kind of write them off a little bit earlier, but they are getting back onto the ball. Causing us some potential issues. Knock it into Granite Xhaka, who finds Martin Odegaard. Strikes against his man. Just unable to find the breakthrough there to give us the lead again. Mitrovic. They've signed Alexander Mitrovic. Interesting. So that's why we weren't playing him when it came to the game against Fulham on there. Because he's made his move to Bryson and Hove Albion. Not the type of striker I deserve would like, but a very solid one. And uh, as I say, Alper is his main baby. So Jesus, can he find the breakthrough to get his hat trick? Strikes it well. Good save. It looks like this one is probably going to end in a draw. We're two minutes into the two minutes of added time. Loop and header from Saliba off the crossbar. Headed away, just can't find a breakthrough there, so it's another draw. It's a tough game, but manager of the month, Graham Potter, has showed why he's got that award. It was a bit of an end-to-end, -end, that one, so, but it was a good good performance from Brighton. Uh, we'll skip the post-match. We don't want to be associated with that. It's unfortunate. Um, so Spurs getting a nil-nil draw with Nottingham Forest, but nothing too concerning there at all as I say we're kind of so far ahead now that we don't really need to worry that much um, this is another group stage game again 
I don't really want to play that because we are already pretty much, or well, basically already confirmed through. So we'll just skip ahead of that one. Um, us undefeated in that Europa League stage and another win there will certainly confirm that. So it looks like we have Liverpool at home coming up. So this is a big game. Um, it is one that Arsenal did win in real life. We, it was uh, it was a bit of an, an end to end with that ending 3-2 to Arsenal Football Club. We looked very impressive and I think that was when a lot of people started taking Arsenal seriously to play against Liverpool and, and beat them in the in the manner that we did was a, it was a big statement um, and as I say that that is kind of the, the turning point for us and what really almost passing of the baton really from Liverpool to Arsenal Football Club to be the ones to challenge with Manchester City for the title uh, obviously with Liverpool and Man City going at it for years and, and what a battle that has been it's been an incredible rivalry um, Liverpool seen as kind of the more benevolent of the two with them doing it with a with a decent net spend whereas Manchester City doing it well by throwing money at it um, but it's certainly been a, a very even battle between those two for, for the good few years with Liverpool obviously performing better at the European level and Man City typically doing better at the domestic level um, but what Liverpool have achieved is under Klopp has, has just been almost surreal and Although they're not doing their best right now, there's been no talk whatsoever of Jurgen Klopp being booed out of that club, and that is out of respect for what he has brought to them over the years, and, and rightly so. I think people calling for his head, nice, beautiful shot in the sky there, not sure what's going on, um, but people calling for him to be sacked after what he's brought to that club is maddening. Uh, I can't get my head around that one, but... Um, I'm sure they'll come good again. As I say, I think there are a few signings short in midfield, and I think that's kind of where a good portion of, of their problems have come from. Uh, obviously, the loss of Sadio Mane is, is always going to be a, a tough one, but the players they have in those positions, uh, Diaz, Salah, Firmino, Cody Gakpo, there's no... Uh, uh, Darwin Nunez, of course, there's no shortage of quality up front, and that, that's not where the problem lies. I think a lot of it lies with... Um, almost similar to Manchester City is a slight mentality issue coupled with a, an ageing squad just need a few few movements and then they'll be back amongst it I'm sure um, and it's kind of weird seeing both Liverpool and Chelsea so far out of favour at the moment as we're used to seeing them right up there with, with the big boys with Man City um, challenging so I'm sure there are maybe a window or two away from, from being back up there, but it's been a bit of an odd one. They're, they're kind of going through some ownership changes at the moment as well, and, and it's very unsettled at Liverpool Football Club. And again, all these things are contributing to what has been a very, very shaky start from them. But there's no kind of commitments from ownership to bring in any players at the moment. Uh, and that's obviously negatively impacting Liverpool especially this season. But I think once you have a bit of stability, they're able to spend some money in, in the transfer market. I think they'll be back. I have no doubts about that. It's just a matter of when. And it'll be interesting to see who eventually does make that takeover, whether they will be kind of the traditional oil barons who just throw money at it. Because um, I think that kind of financial capability with Jurgen Klopp leading it tactically I think um, that'll be a very very interesting blend and, and again something for Pep Guardiola to be thinking about and, and now Mikel Arteta to be thinking about with what he's done with Arsenal they are very much in that, that same conversation and, and I don't think Manchester United are, are too far away from that either under Ten Hag uh, there's a lot of clubs being able to spend big money at the moment um, and it's kind of transforming the Premier League there aren't a lot of terrible teams in the Premier League now um, there's a lot of tough fixtures I think it's kind of a more competitive league than it's than it's ever been uh, a lot of teams I think Spurs Manchester City and Arsenal all kind of breaking points records um, for certain stages a few games ago uh, 
but I think it's just kind of the nature of which Arsenal have grabbed the league by the scruff of the neck has kind of made that easy to overlook. Um, but there's certainly big issues at the, the large clubs at the moment. That was a very good saver from Ramsdale. Um, but yeah, as I say, issues at the major clubs at the moment have certainly made this a, a golden opportunity for Arsenal Football Club. And it's looking like it's going to be one that we grasp with both hands. So we'll have to see how the rest of the season pans out. So Saka burning away from pretty much everybody there and goes for a cheeky dink. Very good save by Alisson, but a brilliant run from him. It didn't seem like anybody could get close to him. Oh, I don't know what's happened there. So you guys kind of slid past. Jesus was away from him and then he passed the ball straight into the back of him. We are all over Liverpool here, doing very well in possession. The spaces are opening them up. I think that their press is causing them problems. Arsenal are, again, a very press resistant side. But it's a good half there. A 1 0 lead to finish off that 1 0. Look at that. Look, Kyle Saka. The young dream. Alisson there. He's been the, the kind of ever constant in that Liverpool team. I think a lot of fans are frustrated with. Various different players, um, players like Trent Alexander-Arnold and Van Dijk and all these kind of players who had been so sturdy for Liverpool for so long, now looking slightly off the boil. But Alisson, however, has not been part of that. He, again, he's, he's been unwavering in his quality. He's, I think he's probably the best goalkeeper in the league. Um, I think in terms of pure entertainment value, Edison... Because um, he's he has adopted that uh, that Pep Guardiola almost psychotic style of play where he just doesn't feel any kind of pressure. He will play out of the back no matter what, no matter what pressure is applied to him. He will play the way he wants to play, and no amount of pressing will put him off that. And that's a lot of respect to him for that. Uh, and it does make for very edge of the seat play I mean as a Manchester City fan it's probably quite difficult to, to watch game in game out without having a minor heart attack but um, it certainly is a lot of fun for, for neutrals like myself um, and with um, Ramsdale certainly coming up as a bright number three there just behind Alisson and Edison and as Gabriel Zeus scores again extends himself as the top scorer in the league and gives us a solid 2-0 lead over well, Liverpool a rocket a really from Jesus under well pressure done. from Virgil van Dijk rockets the ball just past Alisson who's unable to get his fingers on the end of that one very impressive dominant performance here against Liverpool it's a big statement yet again 23 goals in 14 matches it's saying it so that's pretty much Haaland statistics but for, for Jesus um, obviously in real life Jesus not being so prolific uh, but what he does bring to the team is a lot of energy a lot of pressing um, a lot of ability to run the channels hold up play is amazing on the ball his dribbling ball retention very good outlet he brings so much more to us than just the goals I mean the goals will come I'm sure of that but he's adding so much more to it and there he is again getting himself his brace he just cannot stop scoring at the moment and for him to do it in a big game like this I think Liverpool's press is causing him massive problems um, we just seem to be playing through the press like a hot knife through butter and that man being on the end of it you just know it's going in the back of the net he's tucked that way nicely Partey piling the pressure on just can't get his foot on the man so it's interesting to see actually with, with Thomas Partey that kind of conversation around him the controversy around him has very much died down um, I mean, at the start of the season, it was something that was very prominent, especially with um, away fans. But it's kind of something that's gone very quiet as Real sticks the fourth past Liverpool. Um, but it just seems like everybody's forgotten uh, as a result of, of Partey's performances. And 
I think that might come back to, to horn him. I think that's probably another part of the, the Jorginho deal. Um, but it doesn't seem to be affecting the boys. They just seem to be, be ploughing on and, and rightly so. You know, let the law do its job. And if they're not doing anything, then nothing we can do about that. The strike from Jota over the bar. No real threat from Liverpool here whatsoever. It's been a, a pretty straightforward game for us. I mean, as I say, we're four goals to the good. As we play another ball through, just intercepted there. Um, but yeah, Liverpool have had nothing. I think their their press is meaning that they're leaving a lot of open spaces. And with the pace of Jesus and Saka and Liao, it's very easy to exploit. But they're offering nothing going forward either. Salah's been kept quiet all game, just like he was in the in the real life version of this this encounter, with uh, Tommy Yasu being tasked with keeping him quiet. He did so very well, I think. He was opted for ahead of Kieran Tierney. I think there were a lot of questions from some Arsenal fans as to why that was. Um, but the physicality and, and Tommy Asu's ability to play very comfortably on, on uh, both his left and right foot has made him a, a very versatile and useful signing for Arsenal. Um, again, with his ability to play full back on either side, it, it makes him a, a big, big um, tool within that, that Arsenal side. And again, he, he can play centre back also. And the flag was up um, I think Arteta certainly well, likes doing like that, that having that kind of That's player who can play, play a mixture of, of centre back and full back. And obviously, we've seen that more, more focally well, from uh, Ben White, we'll who has been utilised at position. right back. So Granite Jack and knocking it back to Liao. Never in doubt, is it? Five goals here as we score in the last minute of the game to really put that final nail into Liverpool's coffin here. The youth, the power, the brilliance, the finishing, all too much Liverpool Football Club as number five rockets into the net. A beautiful day and there it is. The referee is peeping his whistle and the fans are loving it. Better team all over. You are absolutely right, my son. I've just clicked on the post message interview. So Manchester United had a very interesting game there with a 3-3 with Southampton and Everton drawing 0-0 with Spurs. Um, what are your thoughts about Liao? Uh, he capped a good team display. Very good. Very good. Can we keep our run going? Of course. Obviously we can. We're incredible. Never, never in doubt when you surprise is more difficult listen we're just so good that it was inevitable really no thank you and i'll see you later thank you for your time um okay what's going on in the old emails rubbish rubbish oh actually i think there was some money coming in it probably wasn't rubbish but that's lovely so next up we have southampton away and we will tackle that in the next episode but thank you very much for watching if you enjoyed give us a big fat like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next video